Hey, I'm Matt from BlackBerry's Enterprise Solutions team, and today I'll be walking you through the BBME SDK setup process from unzip to deployment. For this video, I'll be focusing on the setup process for our rich chat sample, which uses Firebase as an IDP and Google as an authenticator. With the BBME SDK downloaded on our desktop, I'm going to be untarring it with my command line with a simple tar command. You can achieve the same effect on a Mac by just double-clicking the file. Now when you open up the SDK, you're going to find a few folders. You're going to find the Documents folder, the Examples folder, and the SDK folder. For the purposes of this tutorial, we are going to leave the SDK's AAR file in its current state because the rich chat sample points to this directory. Next, open up Android Studio and navigate to your rich chat sample, which for me is located on Desktop, BBME SDK, Samples, and then Rich Chat. Next, I'm going to quickly appease Gradle by updating its build tasks. If you're feeling adventurous, try rooting around the hierarchy of the project and get your bearings on the classes so you can better understand the structure of the sample. Next, we're going to open up some files we'll need later. So give that shift key a double click and search for your app.properties, your Android manifest.xml, and also open up your Google services.json. Now launch Chrome or whatever browser you use and head to console.firebase.google.com, which will present you with the Firebase console. So in Firebase, select Add Project, which is a solution that can contain multiple Android, iOS, or web applications. And we're going to name the project Rich Chat, and I'll select my country as Canada. Now for this step, we're going to have to head back to Android Studio to our Android Manifest.xml and grab our package name. Now that we have it copied, we're going to head back to Firebase and paste it into the Android package name field. Next, we're going to give the project a nickname. In this case, I'm going to call it Rich Chat. And we're going to have to grab ourselves a SHA-1 key. To generate this SHA-1 release key, I'll be opening my terminal and navigating to my root directory of the sample, which for me is at examples, and then CD into Rich Chat. And obviously, you can achieve the same effect by navigating through Finder. Now that we are inside the root directory of the project, we will be using a command line tool known as key tool to generate our keys. The reason we are generating the keys in this directory is for easy access later. And for the sake of consistency, we will be generating our key store's name as release.keystore and our alias as alias. When we run this command, it's gonna ask us to enter two different passwords and for both, we're just gonna put in password. And when you're generating your keys for production, please don't set your password to password. It's also going to prompt you for some identifiable traits. You can make them up, you can put in actual ones, you can do whatever you like. At the end, input a Y or a yes to indicate that you'd like to finish. Enter yes at the end to continue and select return to indicate that you'd like to make your alias password the same as the key store, which is currently just password. I'm just doing this for simplicity of the video, but obviously don't do this for production. Now we're going to take that same key store we just generated and list it with a list argument. Now to do this, we're going to have to enter the information we just inputted. For example, um, for the flag key store, we're going to have to input the identifier release.keystore for alias, alias. For store pass, we're going to put in password as we set it, and key pass is password as well. Now don't forget to add the list flag to the command, so it will print out all your SHA-1 and SHA-256 keys. Now we're going to start bringing things back together by taking that SHA-1 key we just printed out and paste it into the Firebase Create an Android App window where it asks to input a SHA-1 key. And then we're going to register the app by selecting the register app button. Once this is done, it's going to prompt you to download the Google services.json that's been generated based on your unique Firebase. Now I'm just going to do this and achieve the same result by showing you the absolute path 
to the Google Services.json inside of the Firebase console. Select the Options icon and then select Project Settings, and there you can download the Google Services.json by selecting this button. Now that we have our Google Services.json downloaded, I'm going to move it to the desktop and open it up with uh, a text editor, in this case, uh, Text Edit. I'm going to copy the contents of the Google Services.json and paste it into Android Studio's Google Services.json. This will just save you integrating a file into Android Studio. Now we're going to shift back to Firebase, head to the Authentication tab, then Sign In Method, and remember to enable Google as a sign in identity provider. Next, I'm going to head back to Android Studio, select Build in the taskbar, then select Build Variant, and set all variants to release. I'm just doing this to ensure the uniqueness in deployment and of the shot keys. And now it's finally time to start copying some properties around. Next, fill out a quick description for your application and select the Use Google Sign-In button, which will auto-populate the form with the required information to use Google as a sign-in provider. And for the magic of the SDK to work, we're going to head back to our Google Services.json, copy our client ID with type 1, head back to Chrome to the domain acquisition form, and paste it into the client ID field. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to use multiple client IDs, you can always paste them into this field using a comma as the delimiter. When you scroll down to the bottom of the window, you can select the Add button to generate a new domain. It'll bring you to a form containing the domain that you just generated, and it will also send you an email containing all this information. Don't worry, if you end up making a mistake on this form, you can always go back and update your domain with new client IDs, new description, etc, etc. Now for one of the final touches. Just copy your domain and paste it into the required field on the androidmanifest.xml. and also head over to your app.properties and paste it into the user domain field. 